Hi, this is Mike Power, President and CEO of Silver Range Resources, and this is an update on our Enigma property. First, a quick word from our lawyers. Enigma is located about 33 kilometers south of Yarrington in Lyon County. It's in the Walker Lane, home to many of Nevada's great gold deposits. The Walker Lane's an 800 kilometer long by 100 kilometer wide fault zone that runs from Southern California north along the Nevada-California border into Northern California where it ends against the Cascade Arch. What it is is actually the new San Andreas Fault. It began about 23 million years ago and has slowly propagated to the north like a crack in your windshield. It separates the Sierra Nevada block to the west from the rest of North America. Displacement across the fault is dominantly right lateral shifting the Sierra Nevada block to the north relative to North America, but there's also a small component of extension, moving the Sierra Nevada block away. This creates a trough in the center of the Walker Lane. Just to drive the point home, here's what situation might look like in about 10 million years from now. Displacement along the San Andreas Fault between the Pacific Plate and North America Plate will jump inboard to the Walker Lane and Baja California will creep to the north, ending somewhere around Hawthorne. In detail, the Walker Lane is an extensional trough, and it consists of a series of northwesterly striking strike slip faults and subordinate north to northeast striking dominantly dip slip faults. In the center of the Walker Lane, the dip slip is taken up in a series of extensional duplexes. These consist of strike slip faults bounding a series of extensional dip slip faults. In three dimensions, they look like this. Now these extensional faults are great places to look for ore deposits as you open up voids and cavities into which hydrothermal fluids can circulate. There are numerous high grade gold occurrences and deposits and camps along the Walker Lane. Some of the most famous gold camps in Nevada are located here, including the Comstock, Goldfield, and Tonopah. Enigma is something different. It's actually located in granites away from any of the major epithermal centers. Here's Enigma sitting out in Mesozoic intrusive rocks well away from tertiary volcanic rocks to the southwest and it's not directly associated with any major structures although you can see some north striking regional features in the area the property occurs on the back of a small ridge here uh, on the west side of the walker river and once again you can see that it basically covers a package of granitic rocks here that are slightly overlapped by tertiary uh, day sites off to the northwest. A little history here. Mining in this area began in the 1860s when the Cambridge mine was discovered by Henry Blaisdell. He later went on to become a governor in Nevada. At the Cambridge mine, development consisted of a central shaft about 400 feet deep and production was on two levels. An estimated 10,000 tons, grading perhaps a third of an ounce, were moved to surface and milled. The operation shut down in the late 1800s, only to be restarted by the Cambridge Mining Company with exquisite and terrible timing in 1940. They operated until FDR shut down gold mining in 1942. The mill foreman, Ernest Rink, went on to stake much of the ground in the district, including the contact claims, which covered the area of the current Enigma property. Since then, however, this district has been very quiet and with the area of the Cambridge mine recently being staked and sold to uh, hobby miners. Apart from that, there's not much happening in this district. Silver Range was drawn to this area by a single MBMG sample and by a line of shafts that showed up on old USGS topo maps. Our sampling to date's been pretty encouraging, returning uh, gold along a 1,500 meter long corridor 
with best results up to 73 grams and about a quarter of the samples collected returning better than two grams. We went in, did a little mapping and confirmed the regional picture, namely that the claims are primarily underlain by Triassic to Jurassic granite. There's a sequence of tertiary andesite that's overthrust here along this thrust fault. Within the granite, there is a north to north northwest striking shear system here with this interesting ladder work uh, down in the southern part. Gold's associated with the shears in the granite. And the mineralization appears to be mesothermal. Here's what it looks like. You'll see here the quartz contains very little in the way of a classic epithermal texture. It's fairly coarse grained. Uh, in some cases, we found laminated uh, qu quartz. Uh, there is alteration surrounding it that appears to be clay rich, but there's a lot of surface clay alteration in the granites to begin with, so it's hard to separate one from the other. On the whole, however, we believe that we're looking at a series of mesothermal shear hosted veins and not an epithermal system in this instance. To map the shear zone in greater detail and to locate drill targets along it, we ran a geophysical survey program over the entire property. This consisted of total magnetic field surveys and horizontal loop electromagnetic or HLEM surveys. Here's the calculated apparent resistivity from the HLEM data. The HLEM surveys located discrete conductors in the northwest corner of the property. These are thin plate conductors. They don't show up in the apparent resistivity data colored underneath, but they are located with the thrust faults that move the tertiary andesites over top of the underlying granites. In the apparent resistivity data, there's an interesting resistivity low running the length of the grid here with which all the high grade gold values are associated. In the total magnetic field survey data, we see a similar association between a magnetic linear and the higher grade gold values. It's not as clear as in the HLEM data, but nonetheless runs the length of the property and is associated with the shear system. So a picture starting to come together here at Enigma. It looks like we have a shear system in the underlying granites within which are mesothermal quartz veins developed in different locations along the shear zone. The next step for us will be to run a structurally controlled 3D IP survey along the length of the shear zone to locate ore shoots. It's been our experience in Archean terrain that the tops of some of these systems may have limited aerial extent in the range of a couple hundred meters, but they can persist at great depth. They're a worthwhile target and we'll be doing more work here. So stay tuned.